previously the scientists they thought that the light of the moon was its own light but quran says in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 61 blessed is he that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made the constellations in the sky and placed therein sun that is a lamp having its own light and moon having borrowed light the arabic word used for the sun in the quran it is shams and its light is always described as siraj wahaj or diya which means a torch having a light of its own or a blazing lamp or a shining glory always the light of the sun is described as wahaj siraj or diya meaning a light of its own the arabic word for moon is kamar and its light is described as munir or noor meaning borrowed light or a reflected light there is not a single place in the quran where the light of the moon is described as its own light and the arabic word for star is najm and its light is described as saqib meaning the light by the time it reaches the earth it loses its brightness like a piercing brightness the bright light by the time it reaches it consumes itself and this message that the sun has its own light describing as wahaj siraj or diya and the moon having borrowed light that is munir or reflection of noor is mentioned in several verses in the quran including surah yunus chapter number 10 verse number 5 as well as surah nuh chapter number 71 verse number 15 and 16 and the quran says in surah tariq chapter number 86 verse number 3 that what najm saqib describing the star its light as saqib that means it pierces it's of piercing darkness previously the european scientists they believed that the earth was the center of the solar system and the universe and all the planets as well as the moon and the sun it revolved around the earth this was called as geocentrism and this was believed since the time of ptolemy in the second century bc till as late as 16th century until nicholas copernicus in 1512 he propounded the heliocentric theory of the planetary motion and he said it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth it revolves around the sun and later on a german scientist by the name of johannes kepler in 1609 he wrote in his book by the name astronomia novia that not only do the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun but they also rotate about their own axis and when i was in school i passed my school 1982 about more than 25 years back there i too read that the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun and the planets and the earth they rotated about their own axis and the whole solar system also in the galaxy it revolved including the sun but the sun did not rotate about its own axis in this context the sun was stationary but when i read the verse of the quran in surah anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 33 which says huwal ladhi khalaqal layla wan nahar it is allah who has created the night and the day wa shamsa wal qamar the sun and the moon kullun fi falqi yasbahun each one traveling in orbit with its own motion so the quran says the sun and the moon besides revolving they also rotate about their own axis the arabic word used here is yasbahun derived from the arabic word sabaha which describes the motion of a moving body if i use this arabic word yasbaha for a person who is moving on the floor it will not mean that is rolling it will mean he is either walking or running if i use the same word for a person in the water 
it will not mean it's floating, it will mean it's swimming. Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word for a celestial body, it does not mean that it is flying in the air, it means it is moving along with its own rotation. It is rotating about its own axis. So Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, it also rotates about its own axis. And today, science has discovered that even the sun rotates. Since we can't see the sun directly, you get blinded if you see directly. If you have an equipment and have the image of the sun on a tabletop, we find that there are spots in the sun. And it takes about 25 days for the spots to complete one rotation, indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. Imagine when I was in school, I was taught the sun was stationary, it didn't rotate about phone axis. And the Quran mentioned 14 years ago that it rotates. And now, alhamdulillah, most of the schools have incorporated that the sun also rotates. Further, we read in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 40. It is not permitted for the sun to overtake the moon, nor the night to outstrip the day. The moon and the sun. Kulun fi falaki has bahoon, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. Now the scientists say that the orbit of the sun and the moon is different. So there's no question of the sun overtaking the moon. That's what the Quran says. And today the scientists, they tell us that the sun is moving in a direction in the universe to a particular fixed direction, which is called as the solar apex. In the constellation of Hercules, also known as Alpha Lyra, at a speed of 12 miles per second. And today the scientists they tell us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction which is taking place since billions of years. And one day, this chemical reaction will cease. And so will the light of the sun cease to exist. And so will the life on this earth cease to exist. But the scientists say it will take another few billion years. Quran gives a similar message. In Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 38, that the sun is running its course for a period determined, to a place determined. The Arabic word used here is mustakar, which has two meanings. Either it means for a period determined, or it means to a place determined. And today science says that the sun is moving to a particular spot known as solar apex, and it will exist for a particular time period. So both the meanings of mustakar, to a place determined, and for a period determined, according to science, is perfect. Imagine, Quran mentions this 1400 years ago.